Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm currently in my car because I just got a call from the post office that our chicks are ready to be picked up. So I'm on the way to get them. Um, we ordered them back in December. We ordered pretty early and they shipped and hatched on Monday. Today is Wednesday. So I just got a call that they are ready at the post office. So it didn't take that long to get there. So I'm going to go pick them up and get them set up in their little temporary brooder and I'll catch back up with you then. So I just got home with our chicks, as you can see here. Um, but side note, I guess our mail lady, she correlates our house number with our pig, Hank, because before she opened the door to hand me the chicks, she said, oh, these chicks are about to go play with their pig. So does that mean we live in a small town or? <laughs> So we've got all our little chicks in our makeshift brooder here. This is just set up in our shed temporarily, just for the first week or so, um, just until they're hardy enough to be put outside into the chicken tractor. Uh, but they've got a nice little area here. We'll get the heat lamp over there put on them soon, and we'll get them some food and water. Um, so I, like I said, they hatched on Monday, and they got here today, which is two days later. So that's not bad at all. And you may be wondering how they are able to ship live birds in the mail. Um, the postal service is the only place that actually does it. And chicks can actually survive for 72 hours, I believe, without food or water. And that is because when they hatch, they eat the egg yolk that is in their egg. Um, and they're able to survive off of the nutrients from that for those first 72 hours of life. So I'm still gonna get them some water and food, obviously, but that is how they're able to ship them in the mail. All right, so we've got their food and water set up. We are giving them starter grower feed. They will need a lot more protein than just your average chicks because they grow so fast. Um, we also have the heat lamp on. I put it just kind of over on that side. That way, if they're cold, they can go over there. If they're warm, they can move over here. Um, but they seem to be doing okay drinking water, so that's good. I'm a little confused why this one is orange and the rest are yellow. I don't know the reason behind that. So we ordered 60 meat birds in total. Um, we were expecting to have a few casualties just because meat birds, they're not the hardiest. Um, we got the jumbo Cornish cross and we did the straight run. So um, just male or female, whatever they sent is what we got. So yeah, we weren't expecting all of them to make it. So I feel like two casualties is not bad at all. Um, of course, we may have some more in the next couple of days, but we'll keep you posted on that. 
It's been 48 hours since we brought our meat chicks home from the post office. All 58 of them are alive still, fortunately. Uh, we ordered our meat chicks from Meyer Hatchery online and they have a 48 hour live guarantee. So we will get a refund um, for the two chicks that we lost before they got to us. Um, now that the chicks are here and all settled in their brooder, I do wanna just chat with y'all about why we got these meat chicks in the first place. First of all, like we mentioned in our homestead introduction video, we want to become more sustainable in our way of living. So we just want to eat more homemade, homegrown food, including the meat that we eat. Raising your chickens is one of the easiest ways to get started in raising your own meat. They don't cost that much. They don't really require that much care other than their food and water. They're ready to be harvested fairly quickly in their life. Plus, you can process them right in your backyard. Some people give us really weird looks whenever we tell them that we're raising our own chickens to butcher and eat. The way we look at it, the chickens that we're raising are going to have a much better life than the ones that are in factories who never see the light of day, eat grass, or have any room due to overcrowding. Our meat chickens will be in our chicken tractor, which you can see Jared build in our previous video. But what that means is they're gonna be out in the fresh air daily, and then they'll have fresh grass, and then there'll be bugs for them to forage up until the very minute that they are harvested. Our chickens are also antibiotic free. That's just how we chose to order them without any prior antibiotics. So we're gonna know exactly what we're eating and where it came from, plus what it took to get it on our plates. And that's just much more comforting to me than going to Walmart and just getting any chicken off the shelf and just not knowing the history behind it, what it ate, where it came from. So not only is it gonna be healthier for us, um, but it will also for us and Addie when she's old enough to understand, will make us more grateful for the sacrifice that those animals had to take um, for us to eat, for those animals to be on our plates. So like what I was just saying, it makes you think about what that animal had to go through to be put on your plate. And I feel like that just makes it less likely for that chicken or whatever animal it is to go to waste. You're going to want to um, almost honor that animal, respect that animal, and eat every bit of it. Not waste any, not throw any in the trash. And I think that's something that everyone should talk about, even if you're not raising your own meat. I think that is just something that everyone should keep in mind. And I do understand it's not for everyone, and I know it probably will be a little emotional on harvesting day or butcher day, um, but I feel like the way you have to look at it is kind of like they are not pets from the beginning. Like when you go pick them up from the post office, you have to understand that they're not pets. They have a purpose and they're here for a reason. Um, and that will kind of help you not to get attached. So we chose the Jumbo Cornish Cross um, straight run for many reasons. They grow very fast so that in that way we'll be able to move them to their chicken tractor sooner. And then they'll be eating a lot of grass, which could possibly cut down on food costs for us. And it also will just help the quality of the meat since they're able to get that fresh grass and eat bugs. This breed also most re closely resembles the chicken that you would eat in the grocery store, so it'll taste the closest. And this breed is the hardiest of all the meat chickens, even though meat chickens, like I said in the beginning of the video, they're not the hardiest birds, um, but the Jumbo Cornish Cross is the hardiest of the meat chickens. So they're easier to raise in a bunch of different environments. And we are in a hurricane prone area um, and we're doing this in hurricane season. So the quicker we can get this done, the better and these birds are ready to be processed very quickly. They only take about eight to nine weeks to be able to be ready to process and that's just really depending on your preference for the size of the bird that you want. And once you process these birds, they're gonna average out to about five pounds per bird, which is ideal for cooking so you don't waste as much. There's little to no waste after you're finished. So, however, um, that one orange chick that I showed you in the beginning of the video, I feel like it's a Freedom Ranger, even though we did not order any Freedom Rangers, we were supposed to get just 60 straight Cornish Cross. Um, I feel like that's what it is. I don't know if it was just a mistake or what, but I'm not mad about it. We chose not to get the Freedom Rangers because they take a little bit longer to process. They typically are ready at about 10 to 11 weeks. And I've read that they taste a little gamier. They're not like your typical grocery store chicken. And they're usually still a little bit smaller when you go to harvest them. So that's the reason we didn't go with this breed. But since we just so happened to get one, I think it will be interesting just to see um, the changes in it growing and then the changes also when we go to eat it. So that should be interesting even though we didn't intend on getting any of that breed. 
So the thing about meat chickens, they are specifically bred for meat. So you cannot keep these as pets, even if you wanted to. Um, the longer that you let them live, the quickly, the more quickly their health deteriorates. So if you let them go past the time that they're supposed to be harvest, they could go into heart failure and their legs are not made to carry them past that time. So their legs will give out too, which is sad, but this is what they're bred for. So the responsible thing to do with broilers is to harvest them in a timely manner. Also during this experience, we'll be partnering with our local county cooperative extension. Um, so we're gonna take you along for our, the eight weeks that we are raising these chicks. We're gonna take you along week by week and show you their growth changes, um, development, all that good stuff. And then we're also gonna bring you along on butchering day um, and we are, also renting equipment from the cooperative extension for butchering so that's actually going to save us a ton of money plus it's going to make it a lot easier to butcher especially in our backyard so we're excited to partner with them on this and once all our chickens are butchered we are planning on keeping a good bit for ourselves and then if all goes well we're going to try to sell some locally um, but we're very new to this so we're just going to see how that goes so that's really all i have to say about the meat chickens so far like i said we are going to take you week by week and show you their growth and development and then also bring you along when we harvest them thank you so much for watching this video it really means a lot that you are supporting us um, if you have any questions about harvesting or if you have any helpful tips we are very open to tips <laughs> please drop some comments down below and then please subscribe so you can follow along on our journey as we harvest these meat chickens and raise them and don't forget to like the video because it lets us know that you are liking our content see you in the next one